Welcome, I'm Terry Tropin, and today I'm discussing the basics of ICD-10-CM. This video discusses the alphabetic index and the tabular list, and some of the um, phrases and words that uh, have a lot of meaning in uh, coding. I will, I will post a video on the general coding guidelines for ICD-10 within the next few days. First, let me tell you a little about myself. I have a master's in healthcare administration informatics from the University of Maryland Global Campus and have RHIA and CCSP certifications. I'm also an AHIMA approved ICD-10 trainer. I have taught health information technology at Montgomery College in Maryland for over 20 years. I've also written books on coding. These books are study guides that summarize the coding guidelines. My books include one on evaluation and management coding, ICD-10-CM coding, ICD-10-PCS coding, and external causes. These are available on Amazon. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button and click on my picture at the lower right hand side to subscribe. Here is an overview of what I will be discussing in this video. Talk about the basic structure of codes and then the tabular list and alphabetic index. So we're getting back to the very basic, the very beginning. So for the basic structure of codes is the first character is always a letter. The second and third characters are always numbers. And after that, it varies. The fourth to the seventh character can be letters, can be numbers, it depends. Now remember that the um, alphabetic characters, the letters, are not case sensitive. That, does, that means that if you type in a um, capital A or a small a, it doesn't matter. Now, most codes contain a maximum of six characters, with a few chapters having a seventh character code extension. Here's an example. So K29, gastritis and duodenitis, that's the category. Indented under that is 29.0 acute gastritis, that's the subcategory. And then you have K29.00, acute gastritis without bleeding. That's the final code. Now remember, this is the correct code. These codes are invalid, meaning they're not going to get paid, and wrong if you take them on a test, be, if you put them on a test, because they don't have all the possible digits. Okay. So here's another example. H40 is glaucoma. That's the category. H40.3, glaucoma secondary to eye trauma, is the subcategory. H40.31 is right eye. H40.31X1 is glaucoma secondary to eye trauma, right eye. So that's the final code. This is the final code. Another example, and this one, when you first start encoding, looks kind of funny because there's a, a letter in the middle of it, which we're not used to. O9A, maternal malignant neoplasm, traumatic injuries and abuse, classify elsewhere but complicating pregnancy, childbirth, and perpurium. Wow, that's a long one. That's the category. And then you have O9A.4, sexual abuse, complicating pregnancy, childbirth, and perpurium. O94, O9A.41, sexual abuse, complicating pregnancy. And then O9A.411, sexual abuse, complicating pregnancy, first trimester. So you see as you go down, each one gets a little more specific. And you need to do the most specific code possible. Use all characters possible. So I said that most codes include six characters. Some include less than that, but most include six characters. But a few chapters have a seventh character code extension. That means the seventh character. The extensions provide information such as, is this the initial visit, the subsequent visit, or treatment for a sequelae? Okay. Um, some characters, obviously, in the musculoskeletal system, is this an open fracture or a closed fracture? 
in the pregnancy section, the number of fetuses and the codes are the final digits, the extensions are one, two, three, four, five, and then more than five. Uh, and then there's a, for the trimester in pregnancy patients. We saw an example of that in a previous slide. First trimester, second trimester, third trimester in childbirth. Uh, the seventh character digits are listed in tables. So here's an example. S36, injury to intra-abdominal organs, is the category. Under this category, box. In my book, it's, the box is pink. And it gives important information in the top of the box. The seventh digit character is added to each code from S36. Be careful, sometimes it'll be a smaller range than that. It'll only be one subcategory. So make sure and read that first line in the code. And then it gives you the possible digits. A, initial encounter, D, subsequent encounter, S, sequelae. Now, if you're looking at the code, you see S36.020, minor contusion of spleen. And in front of the code, you see a little box with a check mark and it says seventh. That's telling you go find the seventh digit. Now this is important because sometimes, particularly when it's for a whole category, you may be on a different page than the page that the box is in. But this, seven, this little box with the uh, red box is telling you go back and find that seventh code. So it's very, that seventh digit. So it's very important. So. The correct code, the total code for minor contusion of spleen initial encounter is S36.020A. And without that A, it's an invalid code. It's not correct. So that's very important. So let's talk about AND. Now you know what AND means, but in coding, AND means AND OR. So L08 category, other local infections of skin and subcutaneous tissues. This means that in codes in this category can be used for skin only, subcutaneous tissue only, or both skin and subcutaneous tissue, and or. So inclusion terms. These are list terms located under some codes in the tabular list. And it's, it provides a lot of additional information, conditions for which this code might be used, synonyms for this condition. Sometimes they use, call it a syndrome, they call it something else, they have you know, somebody's name in the title, so other conditions, other names for the same conditions. Other specified conditions that are included here. This list is not exhaustive. It's not everything that might be coded here, but it's a lot of the stuff that can be coded here. And again, just like with the box with the seventh, seven digits, the seventh digits, an inclusion term is not repeated throughout. It may be only in the category, and you may be on a different um, page by then. So look back at the category or other codes in the section to, be, to see if there's an inclusion term and if you have any doubts about whether this is the right place to select the code. So here's an example of inclusion terms. Inclusion. So we have I21.A9, other myocardial infarction type. So what's, what's this included? Well, it includes myocardial infarction associated with revascularization procedure, type 3, type 4A, type 4B, type 4C, and type 5. So type 3 and type 5 and type 4 are all coded in this same category, other, A21.A9. They're not separate specific codes for uh, these types of infarctions. So now let's look at includes notes. This is similar to the inclusion term. Uh, it follow a, includes notes follow a three character code title to further define or give examples of the contents of this code. And you'll see includes listed in a box with a colon 
and then it lists a bunch of codes that are included in here. So in the category inside to neoplasm D00 to D09, this includes these conditions, Bowen's disease, erythroplasia, um, grade three inner epithelial neoplasm, et cetera. These all are included, are coded in here. So it kind of is used to say, to, to make you feel confident that you're in the right area or to tell you, you know, maybe you're not in the right area. So ICD-10 includes, excludes notes. There are two types of them, excludes one and excludes two. These are very important. They give a lot of important information about coding, about how to, whether or not you report a code. This indic excludes notes indicate the codes listed are independent of each other, not part of the same uh, condition. So let's look at excludes one code. Excludes one code means not listed here. Excludes one list only one code. So codes listed may never be used at the same time. So you have Q03, congenital um, hydrocephalus. Under that is excludes one note acquired hydrocephalus. And it gives you the code. So this is important if you say, hey, I'm in the wrong area, you can go directly to G91. So it makes sense, you know, okay, that you can't have, a patient can't have congenital and acquired hydrocephalus. It's got to be one or the other. So you report only one code, either the Q09 or something from G91. Of course, there's an exception to this basic rule. Usually excludes one means the codes cannot be reported together. However, there's an exception when the two conditions are unrelated to each other. So let's look at this. Here's an example of the exception. Um, F45.8, other somatoform disorders, and it lists psychogenic dysmenorrhea, psychogenic dysphagia, psychogenic pruritus, psychogenic um, torticollis, psycho, um, somatoform autonomic dysfunction, and teeth grinding. So somatoform disorders occur when a patient has physical symptoms but no um, physical cause, so it's in the head. It doesn't make it any less painful or whatever, but it's just, it's not, there's no physical reason for the condition. An example would be um, hypochondria or uh, unexplained pain or fatigue. So here's the example, and this is straight out of the ICD-10 uh, book. Patients with disorder, somatoform disorder and teeth grinding don't, and here's teeth grinding. You're not going to code F45.8 and a separate code for teeth grinding because the conditions are related, okay? On the other hand, if the patient has psychogenic dysmenorrhea and teeth grinding, you can code both because dysmenorrhea and teeth grinding are not really related. So in this case, the guidelines say you can list F45.8 and G47.63 for the teeth grinding. Excludes two notes are different. In this case, you may, if documented, code two, list two codes, okay? So ex excludes one means you have to pick one, generally, except for that exception. Excludes two means if documented, you may be um, able to list two. So this note in means not included here, so it's not part of the other code. The condition excluded is not part of the condition represented by the code. Patients may have both conditions at the same time, Again, get back to the documentation. If this is the case, list both codes. Two codes may be needed to re fully report the condition. So here's an example. Um, I-79.2, atherosclerosis of native arteries of the extremities has an excludes two note, atherosclerosis of bypass graft of extremities. So a patient may have both atherosclerosis of a native artery and atherosclerosis of a bypass graft. 
In this case, you can report two codes. Multiple coding. So a distinct code, a single code, all the same digits, are only listed once on the claim form for a single encounter. Even if it's associated with several different procedures, you're still only going to list it one. If there's more than two different diagnoses being listed, it's very important which one is listed first. Very important information. It can affect how your doctor is being paid. Okay, so um, some notes under a code indicate another code is listed first before this one. So ICD-10 gives you a lot of guidance on which code is listed first and be sure to look for these. So it may say code first. For example, code J68, respiratory conditions due to inhalation of chemicals, gases, fumes, and vapors has a note under it. Code first, T51 to T65 to identify the cause. So this code is first and then this code. You might also see a note, code first underlying disease, such as, for example, code L62, nail disorder and diseases classified elsewhere. Under that, there's a code first underlying condition and it gives you examples. And it gives you the code, which also means you don't have to go back to the um, um, index to find it. So this is first and this is second. You might also see a note like code for his complication. Under code C80.2, malignant neoplasm associated with transplanted organ. Code first, the complication of transplantation under T86, and then C80.2. So this is a complication. What kind of complication? Malignant neoplasm. So this is first, and this one is second. Other notes under a code indicate that this code is listed first and then another code. So this also, again, it's if this is documented. Don't just say, oh, it says use additional code, so I have to use something from there. If there's no documentation, you can't. So here's an example. Use additional code. E00, congenital iodine deficiency syndrome. There's a note under this, use additional code, and it gives you a range of codes to use to identify associated intellectual disabilities. So this one is first, and this one is second. Under L93, lupus erythematosus, there's a note, use additional code for adverse effect if applicable to identify drug, and it gives you, again, the drug. So this is first, and this is second. So we have notes that say use this one first, notes that say use another one first. We also have notes that say code also. And this says if documented, code this, but the sequencing will depend on the circumstances. An example of that is M84.6, pathological fractures and other disease. There's a note code also underlying condition. Now it depends, what does that mean? Uh, what, what's the primary focus of that particular visit? Is, the, is it the pathological fracture or is it the underlying condition? So sequencing on this depends. Okay, so let's turn to the alphabetic index. This is like many indexes you see in other books and your textbooks that, we've, that you list a terms, <clears throat> excuse me, that will refer you to the tabular list. So if you start out with the main terms, these are words in the alphabetic index used to locate a code. And this is in boldface, and this is a general term, and then indented under that are more specific terms. The main terms are flush against the left side margin of each column all the way to the left. Now also in the alphabetic index, um, you have a neoplasm table and a table of drugs and chemicals. These are discussed in other videos, so I'm not going to deal with them right now. Remember, never, ever, ever list a code based only on the alphabetic index. 
Remember all those notes and clarifications and sequencing and all of those and seventh digits that we saw when we were talking about the tabular list. If you code only from the alphabetic index, you're going to miss those. So it's really important to find it in the alphabetic index and then go to the tabular list and see what else you got. So what are the main terms in the index? The main terms may represent a disease, such as influenza bronchitis. So the main term would be influenza bronchitis. Main conditions, fatigue, fracture, pathological, or injury. Uh, pathological is not a main term, but the, the fracture is the main term. And then there's an indent under it for pathological. Um, disease, dis disturbance, syndrome. If you have more specific information, look that up because if you look up syndrome, um, there's going to, it's going to go on for pages and pages and pages, and it will be really hard to find. If you have something more specific, look that up. But sometimes you don't. Sometimes you just look up whatever, you know. If you can't figure out how to do it, how to look it up, look up disease, look up syndrome, look up disorder. Now, it's interesting that they have um, also adjectives that you might not think of as main terms. Double is a main term, like double uterus, for example. Large is a main term, like large colon, okay, megalocolon. Or kink is a main term. Usually, there's not an anatomical site. Those are reserved for the indents under the main term. If you look up anatomical site, they'll tell the tell you to see condition. So it will tell you, look up what's wrong with the patient. So what you're looking up is what the problem is, not where it is. So another thing that makes it easier, but also is somewhat confusing sometimes, is that there are different ways to look up the same code. For example, you can look up Downs, un, Down syndrome under Ds, or you can look up syndrome, comma, Down under S. Obstetrical conditions are in delivery, in pregnancy, in purpureum. Okay, so there's several different ways it tries to, um, the index tries to predict how you will think of to look up. I always say look up the most obvious term first because you might, you might get lucky. If not, then you find something else. Under the main terms or indented terms that provide additional information, such as, as I said, anatomical site, cause, due to, that's an important indent under D, indented, subterm D under the uh, main term, or the clinical type, like the type of leukemia, for example. These subterms are in alphabetical order except for the subterms with and without. So here's an example. Obesity is the main term, and it's in bold because it's the main term. Right under that, it says with alveolar hypoventilation and gives you a code. And then it goes to alphabetical. Adrenal, complicating, constitute dietary. And you see under the indent, for complicating, they're more indents for childbirth, pregnancy, purpureum. So you may get, you have the main term, indented terms, and then subterms under the first set of indented terms. So keep going down the index until you find the most specific thing possible, most specific condition possible. Dashes. In some Index entries, you will see a dash following a code. This means you need additional digits. Where are you going to find those? You're going to find those in the tabular list. Another good reason to never code from the alphabetic index. So, for example, preeclampsia is um, 014.9 and it has that little dash after it. This means, in this case, you need an additional digit for trimester. Parentheses, the index also uses parentheses. If a word or phrase is enclosed in parentheses, these are referred to as non-essential modifiers. This means they may or may not be in the documentation. 
they're, they don't have to be there. They're kind of there to reassure you that you're in the right place, okay? If the words in parentheses are not part of the documentation, you can still use the code. Other words in the, in the index are not enclosed by parentheses. These are referred to as essential modifiers and they're generally indents, okay? The documentation must include the words to include to use this code. So for example, the entry for pneumonitis includes not essential modifiers for acute and primary. And we know those are not essential because they're in parentheses. Now you know there's not going to be any indent for acute or primary because it's a non-essential modifier, okay? Um, if the documentation doesn't say acute or primary, it doesn't matter, you can still use these codes. So the essential modifiers in this example are air conditioner, allergic, organic dust, red cedar dust, okay, indented under the main term. You cannot use code J67.8 unless the documentation specifically states organic dust NEC or red cedar dust. If it doesn't say that, you can't use these codes. So these are essential modifiers. The index also includes default codes. These are used if none of the indented terms fits the case. In this example, you look up botulism, okay? And mm, it's not an infant, it's non-food born, it's not a wound from a wound, so you're going to use this code. The code listed up by the main term is the default code. Nothing else fits, so you're going to go to the default. An abbreviation used in the index is NOS, not otherwise specified. This indicates that the documentation does not include enough information to select a more specific code. For example, if the documentation states only hypoplasia, bone, none of the indented, and none of the indented terms, of, you can't assume that it's the face, assume that it's the marrow, assume that it's the skull. You don't have, you just don't have enough information. In that case, you're going to use the NOS code Q79.9. Also in the index, the guidelines define the guidelines define um, use of with and in used in the index. This means associated with do to. So if they use with and in, that means you can assume that the conditions are related. If it doesn't, you can't necessarily assume that. Unless a guideline requires documentation. So in some specific chapters, it says they have to specify a link in the documentation or unless the documentation specifically states the conditions are not related. So here's an example. A patient has hypertension and heart disease. You can assume that it's hypertensive heart disease, I-11, unless the physician specifically documents that the hypertension and heart disease are not related to each other. So you can assume they are unless documented otherwise. Like many indexes, the alphabetic index uses terms like C and C also. C refers you to another term. C also means, yeah, there's some possible codes here, but you might want to look there, okay? So um, hypernomia, it says C lymphoma, okay? For fenestration, fenestrated, it says C also imperfect closure, but these codes may work depends on the circumstances. If these codes don't sound like they're what you're looking for, you can look at imperfect closure and that may have what you need. Now some symbols are used both in the tabular list and the alphabetic index. Sometimes they have different meanings. An example is brackets. In the tabular list, brackets enclose synonyms, alternative wording, explanatory phrases. For example, C91.0, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, and they have brackets that say ALL, which is the abbreviation for acute lymphoblastic leukemia. 
in the alphabetic index, it's used to identify manifestations. So again, this is a sequencing issue. So for example, if you look up infiltrate myocardium myocardial fatty, you will find two codes listed, E74.02 and I43, and note that these are italicized. So this means in order to report this code, this condition, you need to code, code both codes, and the E74 is, is first, and I43 is second. So it's telling you, you have to use two, and they have to be in this order. Now, when you're putting these on a claim form, you don't need to put the brackets on the I43, but you do need to code both, and you do need to code them um, in this order, the E74 code first. Now the abbreviation NEC is also used in both the tabular list and the index. NEC means not elsewhere classified and is equivalent to other specified. It's used with ill-defined terms. So for example, in the tabular list, biochemical lesions NEC, M99. So there's some indents under this category with more specific codes, but if none of these apply, use M99.9. Okay. In the alphabetic index, you see exhaustion, exhaustive, physical NEC, physical exhaustion, not elsewhere classified. So this is R53.83. So none of the intended, indented codes in this category apply, so use the default code. That's what it's saying. Now, look at NEC and compare it to NOS, which we talked about earlier. Not elsewhere classified to not otherwise specified. NEC means the documentation is more specific than the codes. There's no specific code for the condition. Documentation is too specific. NOS, on the other hand, is kind of the opposite. It means the documentation is not specific enough to select a code. So a lot of people get confused with NEC and NOS, but that's the difference. NEC is too, spe too specific, NOS is not specific enough. Okay, now I always say at the end of my videos, here's what you should write down in your ICD-10 book related to this video, because you can't remember all of this, you just can't. So my suggestion in this case is look at the definitions of code first, code also, and use additional code and circle those. And that way you can find them easily. You might also circle the guidelines for includes notes, inclusion terms, and exclusion, particularly exclusion notes since there's a type one, type two. That's kind of confusing. Now, as you work through your ICD-10 CM book, you may look up something in the alphabet index and find that the main term is not there. It's coded somewhere else in some other way that never occurred to you. What you can do is you can go to where you thought it would be and write it in, write in the word and the, um, the code in the al alphabetically. So for example, COPD is not in the index. You look up disease, obstructive, pulmonary, chronic, it's much more complicated. But if you go into your alphabetic index and just write in COPD, J44, that um, makes it much quicker. So as you work through, and I, I still do this. I still, I go, oh, you know, I never thought of looking it up that way. Write in a note saying this is where it is or referring you to the correct um, main term. You, now, as you also go through each of the chapters, you might want to write in specific guidelines in the um, tabular list for things that are confusing or complicated. Make a note in there. Make it as easy on yourself as you possibly can. This stuff is confusing. So that completes this video. I'll post a video on the general guidelines for ICD 10 CM coding later this week, I hope. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to contact me. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe by clicking on the picture in the lower right-hand corner. 
And again, here are the books I've written on coding. These are available on Amazon. You can see uh, this link, which is also listed in the description, or you can just go to Amazon and type in my last name, T-R-O-P-I-N. Thank you so much for listening. I hope to have more lessons up soon. Thank you.